Cartoon Royale. Pikachu! I'm not even gonna say anything. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> hey everybody, All this right. is a a new episode of Cartoon Royale. What is this now? <laughs> what? This this Go is back, everybody. I'm Come not on. I'm a dude. <laughs> uh, not I'm too too good for us. No, we're too good for him. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, I went there. We can move yeah. about it. <laughs> so yes, I uh, we decided to do a new episode a year later just to come back and talk about more related topics in the realm of cartoons and anime. So this topic for us before I even introduce the guys, I will say the topic for this episode is just movies, you know, based upon cartoons and all that stuff, anime. So first off, to introduce the awesomeness that is my cartoon bros here. We've got Joseph here first. Hello everybody, Joe Bags is back and ready to be on YouTube, though it's not exactly on my channel, but I'll put a link in the description. That's a good way to go. Next we've got Cameron. <laughs> Doing great. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 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 Everything's changed since a year because you got a new webcam. <laughs> yes, and I don't have that. Yeah. I don't have that I shitty got a new laptop. pixely thing. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, we got Keegan. Hey guys, Keeks here. Um, just make sure to check out my YouTube channel, like below. Uh, also check out my short film, Caffeine. It's a school like short film I made. I put all my hard work into it. Just make sure to check it out. Um, yeah, it's been a while. I don't really go on YouTube. I mean, I don't really make videos, but I always go on YouTube, so I kind of know a lot of YouTube stuff. Yeah, yeah, but. yeah. So, we know about movies that are based upon anime or cartoons, but what if there's a, the alternative of having a live-action show turn into a cartoon? I've recently watched a movie, and it's in honor of a recent passing. I figured I'd just get this out of the way. Uh, Adam West passed away yesterday, so I watched Batman Return of the Cape Crusader, which is an animated film that came out last year. Uh, it's interesting how the transition from live action to animation is in comparison because, of course, it's based upon the 66 Batman. And they had three original voices from the original show, which was Adam West, Burt Ward, and... Goddamn, blinking on Catwoman. It was Julie, Julia Newman, I think, or something. I, because there was. Oh, yeah. It. So kid died a couple of years ago. Yeah. So. Was, yeah, one of the Catwoman died. So that's the only three that survived to voice their characters again. Everyone else was played by different voice actors, which you can probably look up them because they actually did a pretty good job emulating, and impersonating the voices from the original show. Because you got the Joker, somebody did a good Cesar Romero impression, you got the Penguin, you got the Riddler, it was really decent. And the funny thing is, like, there's a lot of references like to the uh, newer Batmans, there's like, quotes that, that Adam West says, like, uh, in the 89 Batman, uh, Keen says, you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. <laughs> and Adam West says the line. Um, it's so weird. But, um, no, it's... It's actually good animation. Like Warner Brothers animation does really good animation for their direct to video stuff normally. So th they do like animate, you know, Adam West and Burt Ward. And it's the weird thing about Burt Ward is like he's 70 right now, like in the 70s, and of course he's playing Robin who is like supposed to be a teenager and you can like, kind of hear the age in his voice a little bit. So that's kind of off-putting at most. Uh so but the plot of the movie, it is campy, just like how the show is and the movie was. It is, like, out there because um, <laughs> there's a couple of things I want to mention first because, first off, 
there's a part where Batman gets hit in the head and he starts seeing triple and looking at Catwoman and you see uh Julia Newman's Batwoman a uh, Catwoman and then you see Eartha Kitt and the other Catwoman right next to each other so they show all three of them in a row it's like a little nod to <laughs> It was. It was like you see all three of the Catwomen that was in the past, and it's like, I'm seeing triple. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. Three of my nine lives right there. It's interesting because, uh, and this is weird because I have not seen Adam West do this, but he turns evil in this movie, spoiler alert. Like, so uh, Catwoman gives him, like, a evil potion to turn him evil. At first it doesn't work, but as he goes through the movie, it gets darker and evil and there's a point in the movie where there's like a replicator gun and he starts shooting himself to duplicate himself over and over to take over gotham <laughs> it's so weird he's he, he so can't many adam west batmans you can't get enough of that a lot of adam west batmans <laughs> how is that villainous that's like a dream come true i know right um, they're evil that's like so <laughs> Army of evil Adam West Batman running about. I wouldn't, be mind con- wouldn't mind being conquered by that. <laughs> That's something that Family Guy didn't even pull out because Adam West is Mayor Adam West. Right, show. right. Yes. That. Well, I think I think it's kind of funny in Family Guy that Adam West never makes any Batman uh, no. jokes. No, no, no. Well, and it's, it's it, there's there's like a montage where he's like replacing everybody in the city. So like first he goes to the commissioner Gordon and the police chief's like, I got two new people to replace you, and it's Batman, Batman. <laughs> and and it's like and there's like a montage that goes around. He goes like he goes to like a, a restaurant. It's like you do not cook the finest foods here. Let's have Batman cook my food. <laughs> it's starting to sound like a Lego Batman. <laughs> It's a Lego Batman movie. Absolutely at the same time, you know? It is. It's, it's in spirit with the campiness, but you know, at the same time, you do realize people are getting overrun and beaten out. So, in a sense, it's really actually kind of brilliant when you think about it. It is like, like it, you should definitely hunt down a copy of the movie and watch it because it is a great, a tribute to the original show what? and. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Keep going. I was just gonna say that. I mean, you have, you have both all three. You have the Riddler, you have the Penguin, and then you got the Joker being all goofy as hell. Like the Riddler, the Riddler trying to just give up with the Riddler, the riddles, like with the corny jokes and and Batman doing his puns here and there. And, it, and what I realized about Batman is, especially the '66 version, is that he's a detective. He he comes up with clues right away. It's like, ha! Huh, I never thought this before, and he goes straight to this, you know to the next thing it's like wow he's very clever when he comes to assumptions and trying to foil the villains <laughs> so it's actually a really good movie uh, they In... go no it's it's your floor I'll, I'll talk when you're done <laughs> okay they were gonna do well it got so success, successful they're gonna do a sequel and it they teased that Two Face could be played by William Shatner. Well, since Adam West passed away, he it's most likely not going to happen now because you can't replace Adam West for '66 Batman. Yeah. But, I just saw the movie actually just now. <laughs> yeah, the original Batman movie '66 is actually really good. I mean, sometimes you can't get rid of a bomb. <laughs> that that line was the best line in the that. movie. <laughs> And the shark repellent. We Quick always have shark I mean, the shark repellent. <laughs> yeah, so. Use that, com- that, that quote in a comic, you know? Yeah. Well, there are the. Uh, you know, what seems really interesting about this um, this Cape Crusader movie is it seems like it pays tribute to um, the, the 1966 show, but it also seems to um, subvert it in a way and also, like, bring it up to new possibilities since it's animated. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So here's the thing. I think Warner Bros. is thinking that with this movie, they're thinking about doing something like this with Wonder Woman, the 75 version of Wonder Woman with Linda Carter. So... Do it now while Linda Carter is still alive and kicking. Exactly. She's fine. She's she's only like 65. But yeah, so... Wonder Woman 2, I heard. 
But to see, this opens up possibilities for, you know, classic shows to come back in animated format, you know, for a new, yeah. newer audience to take it in because animation is a kind of a media that people can take in more easily than yeah. watching a classic show from the 50s or 60s, you know. And like what you said with the, um, uh, the fact that Batman clones himself in it, uh, that sounds like something the 1966 show would have done if they had, like, the technology and like the yeah, exactly. the things they could have the, yeah they could have done back then yeah so it seems like they're also bringing a step forward and not just making it a big nostalgia trip they're yeah actually like doing something with it they do it was a really like it was kind of funny just watching it and you see all the classic villains join together and like i said only three of them got to voice the original i mean like i said they do good impersonations of the original people that did it back in the day like you could hear the laughs and it's like pitch perfect of when they did it back in the day like i give them props for the voice acting in this really good stuff i mean so that's just another side of movies based upon shows you know like anime movie based upon a live action show mm-hmm so that's what i thought of it and i i'll, to, I'll definitely have to give it a look Give it, give it a look. You just, yeah, I should check it out. Look yeah, at I'll, put it on my, I'll put it on my Netflix. I still do the DVD order from the Netflix, so I'll see if, put it uh, on my list. I think the whole thing saying Adam West playing himself in that movie just kind of made me more interested in watching it. I mean, I like saw the trailers and clips, and I did see that one clip of um, the movie when... Um, I'm trying to think what clip was it. It was... Um, it was the one you guys brought up earlier about him, like, going dark. They showed something like that, and I saw, like, um, Black Nerd's review of it because he also checked it out, and I'm uh, just, I mean, I wish I had time to check it out, but, like, exactly, it's yeah. so hard to find it around my area sometimes. I mean, I mean, I could stream it, obviously. I get guess, I mean, I, I should get a, Netflix, get a Netflix DVD account. Yeah, I should probably do that. Yeah, I mean, it's or like... Just, it is. Right, on, that's, only, that's really the only way to watch like movies you want to watch now. Yeah, it's on DVD and Blu-ray now. It's been out for a while now. So it was in select theaters at the time last year, but the, it's on home media, so you could pick up a copy. It's definitely worth the, in the collection, especially if you're a big fan of the direct DVD Batman movies for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I mean I don't like the newer ones, but some of the older well, ones are okay. Most of them are pretty hit and miss, in my opinion. Exactly. So. Like um, Under the Red Hood is great, but yes. uh, the Killing Joke was really disappointing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, I thought it was all right. I mean, it, except for the first act, that was not that good. And that's yeah. and that's the thing. If you didn't like the Killing I feel like Joke, it could have been better. if you didn't like the Killing Joke, you know, the same year was the, the Return of the Cape Crusader. So. Oh, two yeah. Batman movies in one year was a good, good year for animated Batman movies, and at least. Huh. So yeah, I just brought that as an example, you know, because there's not a, a lot of those movies where it's animated based yes. upon a live action show. Yeah, and it's a good way to honor a legend. Yeah. Yes, I'm gonna check it out now just to honor Adam West. Yeah, it's a good idea to do that because it's it's probably his last performance as Batman as we know it. So. <laughs> There we go. So the next person should be if we're going F. Bilkel, it's gonna be one of you two. I think maybe Cameron. All right. Uh. So, Neon Genesis Evangelion. I recently watched the entire show for the first time recently, and I gotta say, it kind of um, I don't know what to think of it at the moment. I it really threw me for a loop, and I. And it's definitely made me think about it for a long time. So, uh, anyone unfamiliar with the show, it's um, it's a mecha anime from the 90s, and it's directed by Hideaki Anno, and who um, who was a collaborator of Hayao Miyazaki in the 80s, and he, he also he um, animated the uh, giant warrior in Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, and um, so this show it's about um, this kind of post-apocalyptic Earth, where um, uh, I don't really know what happened. Some ki- something, some kind of aliens called angels. It was a yeah, it was like an impact or something like. Yeah, the some kind of impact, impact happened and it left the world in ruins. And now they, there's a rebuilt, uh, there's a rebuilt Tokyo. Well, okay, so the the world's mostly rebuilt by now, and 
they, it takes place in a, place, in a city called Tokyo 3. And um, where they have this project called the Evangelion Project. And where pretty much they have these supposed giant robots. That's kind of a spoiler. And they have to have kids pilot them. And um, the main character, Shinji Ikari, who he can't... He, he has to be one of the ones to pilot it, but he's always going back and forth to whether he wants to or not, and that's basically the show. So uh, technically, well, they're not robots, they're monsters, or gods. That's kind of a spoiler, though. So, yeah. it's like Godzilla meets Pacific Rim on... Not quite. Uh, At midway through the series, it kind of takes a different turn, and kind of turns into a very trippy and very... Uh, our artistic kind of show. Psychedelic, so, like... Those two things, and then it takes a trip. Yes. You know, because the aliens explode the sh magic shrooms around. Nah, not quite. That's You need to watch the show. It's about puberty. That's yeah. what it's about. That's why you yeah. keep seeing and it. Also, like... some pretty interesting things about it, because Hideaki Anno was very depressed when he wrote it. <laughs> like, he was going through a depression. <laughs> you know, sometimes, yeah, just go have to go through hardships in order to come up with uh, mm -hmm. some... apparently he went through it after the last the show I talked about last year Nadia yeah he, he also directed that show ah. and um, so yeah I can I can kind of understand that like by watching it you can tell that he was definitely depressed with making it because <laughs> it's a pretty depressing show not not in the kind of like oh whoa like not, not in the, like, it's a sad show or anything. It's just, like, like sometimes it gets really depressing watching it. <laughs> like Samurai All right. Jack. Bless so, well, that's different. <laughs> so, actually, the the ending of the show was very um, strange. Like, apparently there was, like, production problems and the ending, the ending of the television show was rushed out. And so it left... So uh, the last three episodes were very much like nothing. Like they were just people sitting around talking with barely any animation and a lot of um, stock footage of live action. Uh, and so the, but due to the popularity of the show and a lot of people um, like um, writing letters to the studio, they managed to get a movie made to do the real ending. And that's where the end of Evangelion comes in. So, the end of Evangelion is the real ending to the show, and not the last three episodes. So, of, of the actual TV show. And, uh, it's a very, uh, interesting movie. Like, I, it's definitely something I have to, I haven't really decided if I like it or hated it. Okay. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't you just hate it when you come across movies like that? No, I, I love it when I come across movies like that, because it challenges my my mind to think to come up with my own yeah. it um, is pretty interesting like the how yeah. that movie like the real ending like kind of was like and it was honestly felt like a cliffhanger but it kind of didn't it kind of ended how it should have ended and yeah. honestly i think the reason why i want to bring this up already since we're talking about evangelion i want to bring up the rebuild of evangelion series which mm -hmm. is like the reboot i feel like the ending of evangelion and that's movie series have some sort of connection like well they're, the, like, re, they're like the in the same universe the rebuild city is the, the rebuild franchise is not uh, over yet they're still making them i know that's why like the rebuild evangelion series like the whole series like the films are starting to be a little bit different from the show like mm -hmm. it's going to a different direction because apparently like, oh, apparently, apparently hideaki Anno didn't get everything he wanted from the original series so it's, yeah. it's actually interesting, in that case, it's pretty interesting to see that an artist who um, who did something popular it gets to go back and retread steps that he didn't want to, that he wanted to make. I haven't seen the rebuild films, I'm going to watch those watch those next, because I'm not quite done with Evangelion yet. Well, I could tell you one thing, the first two are alright, the third one you might, you know, Hate. be a bit mixed about, well... Kinda. I mean, yeah. I didn't. I watched like the first ten minutes of it, and I kind of just didn't didn't click me for some reason. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's because like I was watching it bad quality, or the fact that like they didn't have like a proper like 
English dub or I mean I don't mind watching it Japanese but like it was just like pretty crappy quality it was just so hard to find like it's really hard to find you have to like yeah. buy it on CD for like a high price that movie but or I just, just stopped from there off of Netflix DVD <laughs> yeah go they, back they probably don't place. have it because it's or, like an anime or go to crunchyroll.com they have great decent anime stuff you can stream or watch it's not on crunchyroll either I checked it wasn't so, on there damn it's it's hard nowadays to find, you know. Yeah. But yeah. So, anyways, back to end of Evangelion, right. which is my topic. Right. Um, yeah. it's a it's, it's actually a pretty hard movie to get into when it first starts because the literally the opening scene is um, the main character um, jacking off to his friend who's in a coma. Oh my yeah. god! I remember that scene. Yeah, and it's it's quite a it, at that point it's a little bit hard to like get into because you're like, um. So this is our main character of this movie. How are we supposed? To, how are we supposed to follow him? Our hero, everyone. Yeah. I mean, Shinji has always Shinji has always been never really been that appealing of a character. Anyway, he's kind of a whiny bitch. And actually, for that matter, most of the Evangelion characters are not that likable, except for maybe Ray. So yeah, it's a, uh, and then it it goes in many directions like that. I guess if you're a diehard fan of the series, it might kind of piss you off to see a bunch of characters get killed, axed off like that. In in the very in an interesting like, way though. First act of the movie, yeah. And then when the second half rolls around, which something really odd happened in in the middle of the movie, there was like ending credits in the middle of the movie. Like, oh I, yeah, dude. I didn't understand I didn't really that. Get that. Yeah, I know. I feel like I think it was because it was being shown somewhere at that time, or they yeah. just didn't have time to cram it in. They just so had they, to show credits. Maybe it was like I an didn't get that. Of kind. Yeah. That was when it went from death and rebirth to end of even going. There was like a long intermission, and it was just, yeah. it just kept going. Yeah, it's it's weird. Like when you, when you watch the movie, something's gonna pop up like that. It's, But then the second half of the movie, it gets very um, um, verbose. Let's just say, like they, it's mostly just talking about like the philosophy that the show is trying to get across, and it's very um, and the biblical references too. <laughs> well, yeah, it it takes a lot of um, cues from lots of different religions, and I guess in a way it gets a little sacrilegious. As well, it's beautiful to watch the world in, you is, know? It is. It is a very, like, pretty-looking movie. <laughs> <laughs> the world's ending. It's so beautiful. Oh. Yeah. I, I hope the apocalypse is that peaceful-looking. Yeah, you see, like, a giant person in the sky. It's Ray. It's just like, huh, the world's ending. And you see, like, uh, the yeah. Ava just, like, cross. It's, that's how my world's going to end, probably. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, just listening to the description, it just made me think about uh, a compilation of a bunch of other shows. The one that mainly comes to my mind is Futurama, which the episode where... It's not a lot like Futurama at all. <laughs> you don't like Futurama? Huh? No, it's not at all like the Evangelion's nothing like Futurama. <laughs> I don't know, there are some episodes of Futurama that are pretty trippy. That pay tribute to it? <laughs> I, 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 I there might be. I don't know. I haven't seen. I know regular show before. paid tribute to Evangelion in one of their episodes. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was like the opening was like Evangelion. I think it was like duck mecha fights or whatever. They like it was like the ducks, and like they combined into a mech robot. And the opening of the show I, was literally paying like homage to even. Oh. Should check it out. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hear a lot of people. A lot of people are pretty polarized with that show. I love it. Well, okay, I guess I'll make my closing statement then. Um, I would actually suggest anyone who hasn't seen Evangelion to watch it. I mean, it's not everyone's going to love it, I'm pretty sure, but I think it's definitely one that will stay with you for a while, and it will definitely give you something to chew on hmm. and maybe challenge you a bit. Like, I, 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 still haven't it... decided, I still haven't decided if I like it or hated it, which I, I didn't hate it, of course. I mean, it's, too, it, it's got too much passion in it that I can't hate it. 
Okay, cool. I remember seeing it for the first time too. Like it was back when I was a junior in high school and I was just I was at that state where I was just going through some sort of depression. I was just like stressed out and mm -hmm. some guy online just like say, Hey, look at this really cool anime opening show and I just watched the opening, I was just like, This is a really good ass opening because the opening of the show was awesome. I love oh, yeah. the yeah. Rebellion. And then like ever since then I just watched the show from there. I binge watched it like every single day to the point where I got to end of Evangelion and when I saw that for the first time I was like a bit mixed kind of how I was with the show because I didn't like the ending and Death of Rebirth which was the most pointless thing to ever watch in the world. Yeah I, I didn't even bother watching Rebirth. Yeah it was so pointless but when I got to that point I just felt like wow it's, it's a pretty incredible I was just a little bit mixed on like Shinji's yeah. part but then when I now at now I started to watch it again with my brother he started to watch the show few years later and when I watched it I was just kind of mind blown because I just I don't know I just had a different change in opinions when I saw it for the first time. It's definitely a show I'm really looking forward to watching again through a different eye. I'm gonna give it some time yeah. before I watch it again. It's a lot to think about. It just it's yeah, very it's, it's a very it's analysis a challenge, show. It's a like, very challenging show. Yeah. That's what makes it pretty good i mean there's a lot of bad stuff in yeah, it like even, the main character i don't like but you know it kind of symbolizes someone going through puberty you know or just going through a difficult stage in their life it can really yeah, apply or, to yeah it depends i mean it, it goes through like some sort of inner spiritual state which curious to why every child in that show was 14 years old and was able to pilot like that's something that really needs to be like figured out and it's a uh, anime trope that's that's like 14 year old kids that's a little okay. nitpicky at most but yeah yeah well only children can fit in the evangelions anyway yeah that's just how they're built i guess no, it's, I it's, there's a little know. bit there's a little bit more to it at the end like they, oh okay like, well i guess we already spoiled it they're not really robots oh right yeah, yeah. yeah really charge. I'm but dumb. i did <laughs> I did like how in the film series they actually did bring up the fact that like um, the 14 year old kids didn't age because it's like a huge year gap between the second film and the third film and it's like the kids never age they're still 14 year olds old and everyone else around them has it's like I feel like that was kind of interesting but they didn't really explain it that well for some reason yeah well uh, those are my thoughts on my movie Hmm. And show, give it a watch. I, re I highly recommend it. If you haven't seen it already, a lot of people have. It's one of the most popular shows of all time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joseph, watch out okay. for that tree. Oh, yes, that brings me to the jungle state of mind. Good old Georgia the jungle. Was, <laughs> uh, I'll, I consider the greatest live action movie based on a cartoon. Like, a lot of competition there. Yeah, yeah. a lot of competition <laughs> there. Like, you got a lot of movies that do try hard. They really do try, like, the Jim Henson Ninja Turtle movies, and Casper, and Speed Racer, Bless the Wachowskis and their trickiness. Mm -hmm. Speed Racer tried too hard, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I fucking love it. <laughs> it was perfect. Yeah, but I watched it again. It was yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, when it comes to George of the Jungle, it's one of those movies that it knows it's ridiculous and cheesy and corny, but it plays to the strengths of that, and it also knows it's most likely going to be a family movie because da 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 da. And it's going to have fun with it and do so in a way that is highly enjoyable for kids, but it's also going to be fun for adults. Like, mm -hmm. one of the scenes, I think uh, one scene that uh, the jokes probably is dated at this point, where, um, yeah, see, I, I believe it's Julie Andrews goes to, is, says, I feel like Jane Goodall in this scene. No, it's it's John, not it's not Julie Andrews. It's some other actress. I can't think of her name, but it's not Julie Andrews. It's, yeah, it's... I can't think of her name, so let's not go to Julie yeah. Andrews. Anymore. Yeah. But then John Cleese's character Ape goes up, and he's like, "Ma'am, I knew Jane Goodall, and you are no Jane Goodall." 
in. <laughs> and, you know, and it's just, and of course it ends off in the most cheesy, over-the-top way possible. And it got to the point where I eventually saw the cartoon when I was a little kid. Mm-hmm. And watching the cartoon, I'm like, you know what? The movie is more like a cartoon than the actual cartoon. Well, the cartoon came out in the '60s, where they didn't really have much animation for television. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. It, 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 it was more focused on limited animation, more on the characters and dialogue, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah just see, like I think uh, that movie awesome. actually kind of builds on the cartoon more than like. Yeah. Yeah. Directly yeah. adapts it. Yeah, and that that's one of the reasons why I love it so much is that it builds mm-hmm. on the cartoon. It gives a nice origin story and of course it's got a lot of really really great jokes yeah and... yeah what what i think works most about that movie is um actually brandon Fraser. yeah like, yeah, he, yeah he's, he's, a, he's a very he can be a very likable actor yeah yeah he does a very good job bringing that sweet charm and it's, yeah it, it's he does bring a nice lovable innocence to the role. I mean, he's not the brightest thing, but he does have a nice heart mm-hmm. and big strength, as left by the impressions on the trees. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah George of the uh, Jungle. Hopefully. George of the Jungle is basically a parody of Tarzan in a way. I think I remember actually discussing this with the guys actually earlier this year or last year. So we had a discussion. I believe it was last year since that's when the Tarzan movie came Yeah, that's what it was, yeah. It was our little warm-up we had, and we just we discussed George of the Jungle, so I'll, I'll kind of like reiterate what I've kind of said there, because George of the Jungle for me, I remember watching it, and I haven't seen the cartoon still, but I, I just loved it, because Brendan Fraser does a great job as George. And it's got great jokes. I mean, there's, there's even like one that's still going around today. There's, like, there's, there's one scene where uh, Lyle... Uh, falls face first in like a pile of dung, <laughs> and then all the natives are like, "This is the part we till our headbacks and laugh." <laughs> Ready? Wait, <laughs> that is a gr- that is brilliant satire. You know, on toilet humor in family films. It, I, it's been a long time since I've seen it too, but I do remember one thing: the uh, villain in the movie, the fiance. Uh, yeah. This might be a different movie. I, I like how completely useless he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lyle. That's his name, Lyle. He's completely useless. Like, he tries to... Yes. Yeah, oh, and again. Like, don't want... it's, like I said, it's been a long time, so I don't really remember that much about it, but I yeah. remember how funny, it, how useless the villains it, are. He was, yeah. yeah. They, they pretty much point out how useless it is and have fun with it. Perhaps to the point where... Lyle decides to wed him and Ursula inside the water cave, and when he finally sees it, it's a girl who's like, "No mind if I do, buddy." <laughs> it's it's yeah, it's a decent uh, Disney uh, adaptation of a J. Ward cartoon. Um, <laughs> so well, Brandon Fraser yeah, started another there. Ward cartoon. Yeah, d- do, do right. right. I know. Oh. But, totally. There, there was what? Okay, the Dudley Do Right movie. There's, uh, the one. There's one clever um, thing in it, but the rest of it's shit. Yeah, I remember seeing that one with my mom as a kid, and it went in one ear and right out the other. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Okay. The one thing I did kind of like about the Dudley Do Right movie, which uh, it's gonna be very short, because I th- that's the only thing I liked about it, and right. I didn't even like it. Like it was right. only a good concept. Right. All right. So I, I kind of like how the villain. Um, he seems like he's doing everything right, and then Dudley's the only one who's like, "Oh, he's the bad guy," and, and no one else believes him. But it, it's kind of a nice subversion of like the classic like good guy versus bad guy. It's yeah. like, hey, the bad guy's doing a good thing, but it, they idea. they they don't really do much with it. Like, mm-hmm. and the bad and the good the bad guy's right, the good guy's wrong, but they don't do much with it. It could have been a funny like little some like little play on like old classic tropes of like the good guy versus the bad guy but it yeah, didn't the do anything white hat versus the black hat you know? mm-hmm. so, now here's a question yeah. here's a question question for you Joseph have you seen George of the Jungle too? oh I, I, I saw it on television I, I saw it on television when I was like 
ten. But I, no, just oh. no. Just like it takes going to like it. Yeah, we know we're stupid, but we're not even gonna try because we know you're gonna buy it because it's got the theme and the theme song, and we reference Tarzan. And you see, no, just burn that thing with fire. This is the movie can that I... the first one could have been and been in Wait, the can... pile of Alvin and the Chipmunks and Garfields and stuff like that. <sighs> Good one. What about the TV show that was set after that um, recently came out in the late 2000s? I think it was produced by a Canadian station, but it was on Cartoon Network. It was a yeah, I remake of the show. That's how I remember one of the Georgia Jungles. It was like I didn't like that show. That show kind of pissed me off for some reason. I don't know. Uh, as for me, it just, once again, one air out the other. Yep. I, I just mentioned that because I remember, like, watching that. Because, like, the opening bit is, like, the narrator is like, Hey, you're not Brendan Fraser. It's like, he doesn't even get the contract for him to come back. You know, it's like, that really? Yeah, you're trying to be meta funny. with that? Yeah. Meta humor can fall flat on his face if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, and boy, howdy does that meta humor fall flat on its face and drag itself through the all the elephant poop that the, in, they indicate to laugh at, all the way down to the non-lethal clip that gives you really big boobies. I know, I know. And then, uh, and yeah, and, Tar and George, uh, no, George has a son, and he's reading a book of Tarzan. Like, in... Yeah. Like, 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 like you're, you're parroting Tarzan, and yet the wor like the concept of Tarzan is in that world. It's like, that doesn't make any sense, so that kind of threw me off. So... Yeah. Just, why? <laughs> it, it, Lazy funny. satire. Yeah. Just because yeah. you make a reference doesn't make it funny. So, yeah. yeah. It's... Unless if it's done smart and subtle. Yeah. Th yeah. That's not smart and subtle. That's by our... Buy our amazing movie books, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's obviously better than this movie, <laughs> and you know, it kind of talks down to the audience in, in a sense. Like, it tried to make a joke about guess which one of these ones is Lyle, and they make it so painfully obvious that even one of those movie movies would say, "Ah, oh, that's too stupid, bruh." <laughs> Yeah, so. Yeah, the. the George, so, uh, the very clear. What? George, George, just, George of the jungle. George of the jungle. I'm sorry, I'm just. I just uh, yeah, that's that, that's that stuck in my head now. George, George, George of the jungle, strong as he can be. Now it's falling in my head now. Yeah. Watch it's... out for that tree! That's the. After that's... this is done, I'm definitely going to have to go listen to it, so it'll get out of my head. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was originally going to do the transitions. By singing the song, but you know, but yeah, nah. George the Jungle, one of my favorite uh, live-action Disney movies. Uh, definitely very clever and plays to its strengths. And uh, all around, I would highly recommend checking it out. Mm -hmm. For sure, uh, I have to give it a watch again. And the sequel, yeah, it's been a while. Burn the Saint Francis <laughs> Bell. Had to sneeze. Yeah, so <laughs> definitely check it out. It's actually really good. Uh, so, Keegan, why don't you start your discussion? All right. Well, I have to be honest, it was pretty hard to pick, like, what movie I was going to pick based on a cartoon. But if I had to, I mean, I just want to bring up, like, a fact, like, statements on why yep. certain films based on the cartoons are better than, like, the ones that we are tired of seeing that were not fully anticipated. Right. It's honestly, I mean... If you think about it, what do you think were the best um, films based on a cartoon? Like, what type of category do you think those are mainly in? Live action or animation? Animation. Yeah, 90% of the time they are all animated and typically made by the show's same creator. Yeah. Yes. And I think that's why I feel like these films, I feel like some of those films, that's the reason why I think they work. I mean, if you take a look at... um. Like Batman: Mask of the Phantasm, that was all made by the same people that made the TV show, great, or great movie. the Simpson movies, or Thieves and Butthead Do America, or is that? yes, that movie. You know, that movie was. I need to check that out again. 
and um, the SpongeBob movies. Like, all those films are just really successful that way. And then you look at other shitty movies that are mainly live action that end up not doing their films um, justice. And it's not just live action movies. It's also, um, it's also some classic animated films, like, from the 1940s, like, cool cartoons, like Tom and Jerry and other Hanna-Barbera properties, like There Scooby-Doo. are a lot of Tom and Jerry movies. Yes, yeah, and I feel... And even Pokemon. I mean, I know a lot. I know I like Pokemon, but right to the point where I got to like the tenth or eleventh movie, I kind of just started to fall short from the watching the movies because I feel like they're just carry the love, same tone and stuff. A lot of those movies are not that great. The biggest problem I've noticed with the Pokemon movies, I would have to say, is Ash himself. He's kind of acted as a crippling device. Where we have to bring it back down to the status quo, and that's a real shame because the stuff that they present in the Pokemon movies, they can make really decent films on their own. Um, I think the closest ones that we have gotten um, since, uh, I think the ones that I would actually recommend would have to be the third movie, the fifth one, um, the entire. Hoenn Saga, which included uh, six, seven, and eight. Um, the one and the one with uh, Manaphy and Kyogre. Um, and uh, the one with Big Teeny for black and white. But uh, the one where, but when picking between the two versions, go with the one where Ash gets exactly wrong. Hmm. Right. Let's get back on topic now. Yeah. Back yes. On topic. And there's another. Sorry about that. Yes, and I think the reason why is because people want more of seeing their beloved favorite like cartoon characters they watch on television. They want to see more of it to the point where they forgot that their show that they were in got canceled. That's why people want to see so many Scooby Doo movies or Tom and Jerry because those shows, yes, they were popular at that time, ended up getting canceled at one point, which kind of ticked off a lot of fans to the point where they want like more properties off them and I mean I guess that's a way of making money and I it's a really good job that they're doing that because damn they do a good ass job with that kind of stuff yeah. but when it comes to like you know movies they don't really try that hard to like give all their efforts to make it to like, like, the, live, like the live action movies yes that's another thing the live action movies I don't know why there's so many of these Disney live action remakes but I, they just need to stop. I mean, I know it's kind of like draining Disney's like budget because they already own like Lucasfilm, Marvel, and their Pixar and Pixar and Disney Animation. They they're doing fine with their film business. Just don't remake the classic. Let it just be what it is. Exactly what's going on. They're the live action remakes. The live action remakes are basically the direct DVD sequels of today. Except yes, they, that's. It, Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, one that you genuinely enjoy, like Mike enjoys The Jungle Book, I enjoy Cinderella. I, right. I like The Jungle Book. I actually think that's the rare occasion where the remake's better than the original. Exactly, exactly. Because yeah. and... if you watch the original Jungle Book, it's very, um, there's not really much of a plot and nothing really happens. Exactly. Yeah, I see what's... And if I have to be openly honest, guys, um, I think the Scooby-Doo live-action movies are... A guilty pleasure. I know they're really bad, like they're really, really bad. But I, I got to be honest, it's I kind of funny. That the sometimes. history, Whoa. the history of those movies are a lot better than the movies themselves. Like, like yeah. how they were originally yeah. supposed to be for adults, but they got edited yeah. down. And like even the, gonna... the, even the concept of like Scrappy Doo being the villain is pretty funny because and... no one likes Scrappy Doo, and so just throw him in as the bad guy. It's it's it, it's a pretty it's, there's some clever ideas in there, but it just got ruined by the studio. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you had James Gunn who wrote the first two movies who would later on, you know, make Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. <laughs> and I feel like that is like, I mean, it's just crazy to see the guy who made such a popular like, film franchise like Guardians of the Galaxy start off by writing shitty movies like Scooby-Doo. I'm just like questioning, did the studios kind of mind control him on yeah. what to write? Because mm-hmm. I, James Gunn, I feel like, is a very talented man he, he, from what I've seen now. He is, and I think with most writers, they, 
scripts do get revised a lot, and a lot of script doctors take a lot of stuff from the original context of the script. So maybe James Gunn did write it, but maybe a lot of supervising scripts were just like, I eh, take that out, that out, and eh, I'll change that. So it's, it's not like James Gunn in general. And also a lot of executives are pushing down on the writing too because they want also, certain things. Also, has to do some something with the director. I mean, Raja Gosnell is. Oh, that's true. It, it's true. Directors yeah. tend to do that as well oh, in scripts. Awesome. Like, okay, it, I have not seen one movie of Raja Gosnell's that's actually good. Yeah. So. He's, he's kind of a bad director. It because with any kind of movie, it just depends on who's writing it, and who's directing it, basically, because those two have to work together to make a decent movie. And so, to kind of close things off with the topic, I know it's a lot of things to talk about. It's kind of like an analysis on films based on cartoons and mm -hmm. what can be good about it, what can be bad about it, and what we want to see in the future of what films or what animated shows could be made into movies. If it could be live action, well, not all the time, obviously, but if it could be animated. Like, I know that Adventure Time... Like, the film isn't, the movie isn't development, but it's, that's, like, one I've been waiting to see for a long time, because I'm a huge fan of that show, but I'm always questioning if they're actually making it, because I always see articles that they are, and statements, but that's, like, one I would want to see, and Rick and Morty is another one I would want to see into a movie, because you could do so much creativity with from what the show is based on, and... Even Samurai Jack. I mean, I know the show is over, but before it was actually going to be like a movie finale, Samurai Jack. And it was going to be live action on point or animated. It went from various directors and um, studios. But then they just, you know, wanted, they just made it to like a season finale, which was pretty good. I like this ending of Samurai Jack. But it could be just like, what film would you guys want to see made into a... what? Um, TV, sorry, but um, animated shows, would you like to be, see made into a movie? Hmm. Well, one that comes to my mind is immediately that uh, will remedy people for a sequel to his cousin, uh, Futurama. Like, that would be very interesting to see what they could do for that. You know? I mean, it, it could like be a parody of Guardians of the Galaxy or Star Wars or both. Sci-fi. Honestly, I, I want to see some. I want to see some movies based off the Disney afternoon shows. Yeah, well, because well, yeah, that's that's don't, don't. <laughs> Oh, there well, was Duck a DuckTales movie. Yeah, there was already. a DuckTales. Movie. There's a DuckTales movie it's already, actually, but it's then. Uh, a good movie. It's funny you mentioned that, Karen, because they well, like Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. They're 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 trying to make that work as a live action animated movie, Chip and Dale's. It's. It's still in development, but I was like, oh, yeah, let's see how that goes. And then there's just, like, one I want to bring up. Like, do you guys hear about that one film as in development that is based on every single 90s Nicktoon project that ever came out, and they're doing, like, some... That crossover movie i mean it's a good idea but i feel like it's gonna mess a lot it's sounds gonna over, be messed yeah. up. It's a little overly ambitious yeah it's a bit ambitious and you gotta understand when you do a crossover there are some times when art styles clash and don't exactly get along a uh, good example that comes to my mind are the lilo and stitch crossovers that happen in lilo and stitch in the series mm -hmm. and versus king of hearts which Arts managed to find a nice middle ground to kind of tie these styles all together. But when you watch the styles of Kim Possible and Proud Family, Recess, and Jake Long, Lilo and Stitch, you pretty much turn into a show that's still going on today and go, One of these things is not like the other. Can you guess which one just isn't the same? Yeah. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's always tricky trying to. It could, it could work. Exactly. It could be like. 
Yeah, it, it, they could. They could try. No, it could work. It could be like the. Next... It could be like the next Roger Rabbit if it works out. Maybe that's I mean, what they do you know, like make one Nickelodeon tune that's trying to make a living and have all these background characters be supportive. You know. Yeah. It could work. Mm hmm Yeah. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, just overall, it's just... I mean, it basically depends on the right people who who's working on it or how it's being handled. I mean, I don't know what's going on with the these animated anime um, series projects that are being made into, like, movies, like Death Note and Cowboy Bebop is made into a television live-action series, which I'm you know, a bit polarized about thinking about. But, I mean... I have no it's faith just in like, it. Well, yeah. you, you should, actually, because it, it's going to be created by the same team that did the animated show. Hmm. Yeah, it it's Japanese? being... It, I don't think so. It's going to be for American audiences, from what they said, but um, I think, I mean... If we get the director of Firefly, then we'll be good. <laughs> yeah, and I like how it's a TV show and not a movie because well, here's the if thing it's about... like a movie, it's gonna like you know be like the last Airbender. Yeah, I think Mike being with Cowboy Bebop, Cowboy Cowboy Bebop is like a more a serialized show than a movie. Anyways, I mean, I know Cowboy Bebop the movie takes place during the show more or less. Yeah, which is actually a really good movie to check out that is based on a um, TV show, and it's actually one of my personal fam favorites. I was going to talk about Cowboy Bebop the movie. Yeah, I was going to too, but it was just like, I don't know, I just, I mean, I was, I, there's just, I just was so focused on the other idea than focusing on, like, one movie in general, yeah. because... I'm just like fascinated on like how these certain like animated um, television shows are made into movies and what it goes through and why it was made and what the fans wanted and who's taking charge. I'm just like so invested into like talking about that stuff and if it can work, if it cannot work and should it work and does it need to happen or does it not? It's just like, it's pretty interesting to like, you know, research these things and like you know check it out and see what you think about it mm-hmm i think yeah. that, it's actually a great segue actually to the cowboy bebop movie actually to think about it so why would you just go into that then cameron yeah all right so i i love the cowboy bebop series it's one of my favorite television series of all time um but i was not a big fan of the cowboy bebop movie I have that. Really? Yeah, I I don't know why. I just I just didn't feel invested in it at all. I disagree. I think it could work because every I, single episode of Cowboy Bebop is like a different story. I mean, yeah. there is some episodes that are like into parts, like Spike's backstory, but I think a movie would be an interesting idea and I liked how it was set up, like it was its own thing. And yeah. you didn't have to watch the show what? to go and understand yeah. it, and I feel that like it did a good job of that. That is something I appreciate about the show, like that. But the movie, it stands alone from the show. You don't need to watch the show to understand exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, that, that but for... I think I think my problem with um, with the Cowboy Bebop movie is I, I do like it how it feels like a TV show. It feels like an extended episode of the, of the TV show, but I think it was a little bit too long. <laughs> Like, it just felt like it went on too, for too long. Like, you, Cowboy Bebop episodes are hour or like a half hour long each, and this movie, it gets really close to two hours, so it just feels like an episode that goes on, that just keeps going and going, and it doesn't... Yeah, it, I, I don't know. Like, I, like, I don't it think does... The, I don't think the movie's bad. I think it, it is a good movie. It just felt like it was a little bit too, too lengthy. 
it does get slow sometimes, and that was one of my major problems with the movie. I mean, it does have that point where it just got too slow, and it just kind of felt its like tone, but it ended up picking it up during the third act, which was really amazingly like animated. By the way, the animated studio that made the movie wasn't Sunrise. It was done by Bones, which yes. is the same anime studio that would make Soul Eater and Uruka 7 and my favorite anime of all time, Full Metal Alchemist. Hmm. Yeah, they're, they're um, they have a pretty talented bunch of animators there. That's what's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the opening of the movie too. That whole opening of Cowboy Beep off the movie was just made me feel like I wanted to go to New York City and find where Spike Spiegel is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know the the movie, the Cowboy Bebop movie actually reminded me of another anime movie. Um. Uh, loop on the third, the castle of Cagliostro. Hmm. That's it a actually, good one. It, it actually feels like it has a lot of similarities to that one. Well, loop in the third is similar to Spike Spiegel. Yeah, he in is. a way. Except um, he's a little bit more like rapey. Well, no, loop the, in the third. <laughs> loop on is kind of a rapey guy. Like yeah, the, the original and the manga, shows prove it. Yeah, not so much in the castle of Cagliostro though. He, he's very different. No. But yeah, for some uh, for some reason when I was watching the Cowboy Bebop movie, I was kind of reminded of um, Castle of Cagliostro a little bit. Like I, 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 for some reason, I found the plots really similar. Very cool. Well, I mean, it was Lupin the Third. I mean, Spike Spiegel did take inspiration from Lupin the Third, like later on in the show, which you can tell the similarities in a way, mm. like how they like are designed and how their attitudes. So it's kind of interesting yeah. to see, like um, only one's one's a comedy series and the other one's a drama. Yeah, should well, check yeah, out the Cal Cal original Loop in the Third series. <laughs> Even some of the more recent ones are pretty uh, similar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it... So that's basically all I have to say about Cowboy Bebop the movie. It's a good movie. I just think it's a little too long. Yeah. Yeah, that's a challenge when you're making a movie based on a cartoon. Yeah. Especially when you're trying to keep the same tone and feeling of the. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes you go too long and. Uh, you just, when you. And, and honestly, I. Well, another thing about the movie I didn't like, Ed and Jet were, in the, were not in the movie enough. Uh, I can see that being a bit of a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're my two favorites. So I. Yeah, so according to, um, I was researching this as you guys were talking, the live action series is going to be a partnership between Tomorrow Studios and Sunset Inc., who produced the original anime. So Sunset Inc. is going to have a little, like, producing underneath. So it's going to have a... And then you got Chris Yost, who wrote Thor The Dark World to write the series. Well, Thor The Dark World's the worst of the Marvel <laughs> oh man, we got the writer of Thor: The Dark World. This is gonna be a hit. <laughs> well, you know, it could have been. It could have been any any other numbers of why that movie didn't work. I mean, it's fine, but it's definitely the weakest of the Marvel movies. Yeah, and he'll have a chance to redeem himself this November, you know. Maybe. With, uh, Ragnarok. Well, I'm pretty sure they have different different team working on that movie. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It'll be corny, over the top space. Opera. Well, yeah, Chris Yost did write Thor Ragnarok, so. I'm just curious on where the series is going to be on. Is it going to be on HBO or Netflix? Or is it going to be a online series on some website? I'm, I'm just curious yeah. like where it's going to be like. That, that is. If it, was done by, if it was done by HBO, I think there might be a chance it would be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it's, if I've seen Westworld and. the most financially sound situations for, you know, to launch those shows. Mm -hmm. So you never know what's going to happen. We'll just have to see and find out. Yeah. Uh, maybe in a couple of years. Yeah. Or maybe longer. Or maybe it'll probably not happen. Because they said about the, mo that the movie, it, it never happens. Yeah, you never know. They just they announce things and maybe it'll do something. Maybe it'll poof, disappear. <laughs> Vanish. Vanish. Like, oh. Or what happened to that project? Yeah, nobody's talking about it. 
Um, yeah, yeah, whatever. So, and Hong Kong Fui. Oh. <laughs> By Eddie with Eddie Murphy as Hong Kong Fui. <laughs> I saw the, uh, the demo trailer for that. It looked horrible. Thank goodness 2015 cemented its faith and killed it off forever. You know, it, Wait, uh, what are we talking about? I think I missed something. <laughs> uh, 2015 was the year... Uh, I think I discussed this before when uh, good movies based on cartoons were successful with Spongebob, Peanuts movie, and Sean the Sheep beating Van Forstick at the box office on opening day. <laughs> and dude, no one even wanted to those, watch that movie. All three of those. Doing <laughs> I actually did watch it. I challenged well, myself, and it was terrible. Star Wars, by Star Wars and Jim the Holograms faded away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to bring up because since Joseph brought up George of the Jungle, I want to bring up another J Ward adaptation movie came out 10 years ago and it's underdog yeah. there's no need to fear underdogs here um it's shit <laughs> i'll say yeah. right now that, never saw it um there there i the best parts about it um for one, the way they did the opening theme, you know, the heavy metal version of the underdog theme song. Mm-hmm. Okay, that, course, I'll give it got, that. Yeah, and then, of course, we've got Peter Dinklage and Patrick Warburton as the villain. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to bring it. I was like, was Peter Dinklage in that movie? Yep. He was. Yeah. He was. He was. Yeah. Oh, he is the best part about it. It's... It's yeah, those... it, it, it's actually it's kind of sad too. I mean, looking at him trying so hard, him and P Patrick Warburton trying so hard to bring credibility to <laughs> such a shitty movie, but it, it doesn't work because come on, it's underdog the movie. <laughs> well, I think the real problem is that it's got a ground things in the real world. It doesn't yeah. really. It it yeah, it, 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 it the, you know the whole suburban you know kid with trouble with the parents and you know, that, that, that you know. cliche we see it a million times yeah, yeah exactly dead. Ugh, gotta get a dog to bring us together <laughs> yep. yeah oh I wonder how this is gonna turn out oh we end up not getting together after all <laughs> actually something another odd casting choice in the movie is Amy Adams is actually playing the female dog <laughs> yeah I know what? Polly Polly yeah, that he, she, that Amy Adams? yes, it was. And, uh, and it's so hilarious because Amy, Amy Adams is not only like Polly from Underdog, but she also has a love interest of Superman, and you get this parallel between Underdog and Superman. Uh, oh my God, that's why Zack uh, Snyder tired of her Lane of Steel. He saw, uh, yeah, Zack Snyder was watching Underdog one yep. day. He's like, Yeah, I really I think I like, I really like this Amy Adams. Playing the dog, I'm oh gonna put her in my now. <laughs> Problem is, she was voicing the cocker. Well, well, to be fair, Amy Adams doesn't do a terrible job at well, this in the movies. She just has terrible direction. But regardless, no, it's the writing. Uh, I, I, it's the I think writing. she's. I honestly don't. Lo I love Amy Adams. Like, I think she's a phenomenal actress. But I think she's totally wrong for Lois Lane. Yeah. But yeah. As All right. Let's get back on underdog. the subject. It's, I know. Yeah, I know. It's just a random <laughs> fact for you. You know, what's up with what's up with the J Ward cartoons getting adapted to live action movies anyway? I mean, J J Ward J Ward cartoons are great. I mean, Rocky and Bullwinkle, freaking. I mean, I actually the only good one should be like uh, Mr. Yeah, Peabody, Mr. Peabody yeah. oh, and Sherman. Mr. Peabody was a pretty like yeah. it, it was a passable movie in my opinion. Yeah, it, it wasn't was. it like, wasn't good. It wasn't terrible. It was just kind of like it was, that was a movie. That with this, with these J Ward adaptations, is that when they try to add something in to, you know, make the audience relate to them with the modern setting, that's when these J Ward cartoon adaptations fail. But when they just stick with their premise and what they have, they they become beloved. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. with you got that with Rocky and Bullwinkle and George of the Jungle. 
and everybody says that the best parts about Peabody and Sherman are when they go back in time as, well, and spending time with Mr. Peabody, while the worst part are with the quote-unquote villain that I swear was added in at last minute just to, you know, milk some of that minion's money off of the <coughs> nations. <coughs> Bless you. sneeze. Thank you. All right, well, um, back to the subject, underdog. Yeah, I mean... You know, I, I, ironically enough, I was actually thinking about this that movie this morning. <laughs> and I was just thinking of, just look, thinking back to it, like, that, that movie, this movie has no structure and no, like, it, anything. <laughs> I mean, look at the, the cartoon source. I mean, it's... First off, it was General Mills that produced the show to promote their serial. <laughs> Uh, I remember actually seeing the underdog cartoon, and when I heard about the movie, I'm like, "How are you going to stretch the most generic yet can't delightfully campy of cartoons?" You can't into you. You this can't. Movie? Yeah, you, and, you can't. And here's the thing: like, how? Why does that movie even exist? Like, who like saw that cartoon from the '60s and went like, "Yeah, that we should make that a movie." Like, like, why I mean, does, like. Who came up with it? Like, who decided to green light that? I, I mean, have no idea. people love talking animal pictures. Let's have a talking dog voiced by Jason. <laughs> voiced by Jason <laughs> Lee. Oh my god, I forgot Jason Lee was in that movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he should giving up his career way. after before Alvin Chickmunks. It was the same. Yeah, it was and the and same Alvin's year. It's the same year as Alvin Chickmunks. It is a year. Was before. that? I thought. It was a year oh my god. Yeah, Alvin came out in 09, and this... And oh, that's that right. That was sequel. That was... I yeah. remember specifically taking my little brothers to that movie. All right, <laughs> why I, do you have to get it. Jason Lee, who's, like, from Mallrats, to be in these kids' movies? Could, Did could... you see Mallrats? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mallrats <laughs> is like, amazing. Oh, he was great in The Incredibles. He... Let's throw him in there. Go He's, on, like, see Mallrats. He has a lot of raunchy jokes. Yeah, it was really good, actually. But I, I was just thinking about this earlier, too. It's like, what if Underdog crossed over with Elvin and the Chipmunks? And you have Jason Lee and Jason Lee. <laughs> you have Underdog talking to <laughs> Dave Seville. The, the, the day that movie itself. is made is the end of my life. <laughs> the Jason like, Lee-averse. That's what it should be called. Yeah. The Jason Lee-averse. Syndrome comes in. <laughs> and then... save, to actually save the day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, Jason uh, Jason Lee. I mean, I mean, I can understand what they're trying to go for. They're trying to like adapt Underdog into a, a somewhat origin realistic kind of story, you know, telling. It does pay homage to the show with little references here and there. That yeah, I can... and of course the cartoony slapstick where he goes through a building. And... Well, I guess there's only one thing to say about it is all those inspiring filmmakers out there who have great ideas, just remember Underdog the movie got made. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's that um, music video number they promoted on Disney Channel when that movie came out. It was like, um, they made like a, yeah, it was like that. Yeah, they made the rap version of the song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about recess. <laughs> Recess Ah, uh, uh, Not seen that show in a long time. Uh, or the yeah, movie. it's been a while. I need to watch that movie again. It's been a long time. Oh, I have it on VHS actually. Yeah. Oh, can you can you push it through the screen and let me borrow it? <laughs> I'll probably try to get it through. I'll, I'll, I'll just get it off of Netflix. I'll just get it off of Netflix. <laughs> yeah. It's on Netflix. It's on everything. It's... I'm talking about the DVD Netflix. I still do that because I'm a fucking hipster. <laughs> I do it too. Recess rolls out. It's. I just added it. It's one of my favorite Disney movies in general because of the comedy. It's just really hilarious. Like, you know, that brings us to another interesting moment when a show decides to go absolutely extreme and insert these characters in there. Uh, I, like Tom and Jerry go to Mars and such. Right. But or Willy Wonka. Nothing's nothing's too far fetched for Tom and Jerry. Yeah, yeah, they're they're at that point where they're you know just what I'm jumping the shark. Right. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. But, um, with yeah, and usually they throw these characters into situations that don't belong in the characters' 
they just accept it and leaving the audience confused. Recess, on the other hand, kids stumble upon a, a evil experiment that's taking place at their school that could destroy the world, and they're like, "What? That that? <laughs> and, like, it was voiced by James Woods as the oh, head leader yes. of that evil corporation. Of course, actually... James Woods is like evil in real life. Anyway, so I'm yeah. convinced he's evil because just his his just everything he does is yeah. phenomenal. <laughs> I'm actually more afraid of him in Recess Pulls Out than I am. Uh, with him as Hades. <laughs> so, but all around, it just keeps on throwing great joke after great joke. It gets everyone caught up on the characters, and it does have some genuinely touching moments. You know? It is a pretty good movie. I need to watch it again. I mean, it was... I just put it on my Netflix queue. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> see, something I did notice is with the most of the show... Uh, movies based on TV shows, animated at least, especially Disney ones like Recess, um, The Proud Family, Teacher's Pet, they're actually, the movie acts as like a season finale sometimes for the show in general. Yeah. They, they oh, make... the Proud Family's movie. <laughs> the, the movie... Peanuts. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. So, the, the Peanuts the dance are off. <laughs> No, the dance-off was their big epic fight. They just dance. That's how they beat the bad guys in the end. Uh, that, yeah. This show is so black. It, it, it is, and <laughs> I mean, it's, it, but but yeah, it's like, you, what what's a good way to end a show? Make a fucking movie out of it. Yeah. With it, it's, it's true. Like like with Firefly and Serenity. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't completely satisfied with Serenity. It, yeah, that's understandable because. Um, Firefly is a whole different beast than Serenity was just that one chance once in a blue for a cancel show to get a movie. I'm, I I just don't I I'm not saying this is like any of the filmmakers or the actors fault. It's just that movie could have never worked. I mean, it, it it was a noble attempt, but it it couldn't have finished off Firefly at all. No, that's like, why Firefly show worked as a show more than a movie basically. Yeah. And I mean, he he got an opportunity to make a movie when the show when the show was canceled but uh, yeah. no matter what he did i think there still would have been problems with serenity yeah i mean that's that was yeah it's just you just can't win sometimes it's sometimes you can so with you know shows movies based on cartoons you have a chance to like end off your show right with a big movie finale mm. i was hoping they'd do that for uh, my little pony the baby came up this year that comes out on my birthday <laughs> Happy birthday to me! I'll watch it in your honor. <laughs> Actually, I am kind of fascinated since it's one of the first two D animated movies to make it to theaters in a long time. Yeah, I was interested in that. That that's actually interesting to say because yeah, that's the only thing. That's the only thing I'm a little bit curious about. Like I'm I'm wondering if it's gonna be a hit. Yeah. In, in an odd way, I'm almost hoping it is. Maybe I'll just buy a ticket. Uh... And not see I mean, I never. I'm not a big fan of the show, but I am interested in how 2D they're promoting it because I never, ever see 2D like animated films in my theaters. It's rare Unless you to go see to some that. art house theater where they show yeah. like a foreign film. Or if you go to like a one like night showing of like uh, animated film, like what I did with the Killing Joke or whatever. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah. Or you can trick them like the new SpongeBob movie and make it almost completely animated and only market the live action bits. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how they should do it. That's what that's what Disney should do with their live action movies. And it's gonna be two D and it's gonna be the first theatrically released flash animated movie. So it's a historical movie. Just and just really let that sink in. It's uh, it's being Finally, animated with Toon Boom. Yeah it, it yeah it's being which is a flash system, but think about that for a second. My Little Pony the movie is a historical movie. I'm a fan yeah. of the Blade franchise, and even I still can't quite compute that. Yeah. And, yeah, and, you know, I was originally going to talk about the Equestria Girls sequels, lineups, and them as a whole for direct-to-TV movies, but you brought up Recess, and I'm like, yeah! Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean... and, but I can't close on one of the best songs from the show that challenges Hellfire in terms of moments where you're like, wait, this was in a kid's show? That's a bit of a stretch trying to compare it to Hellfire. I, I don't even know what the song is, but I'm saying that's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> I, I know it's a stretch, but the villains in this song, they sing to kids... In high school to middle school age kids and they're trying to seduce them in ways that you're like are are you trying to seduce them under hypnotic control or are you trying to seduce them sexually mm, like, you wow. know, you, go, <laughs> you know for kids Yep. You know, for kids. <laughs> yeah. You know, let's go when we close off, and I can close us off on that. of the bands. Do we all have to listen to it at the same time? I I can sing it pretty good. Uh, we'll just pull up a clip. <laughs> I'll put oh, it. Yeah. I'll put it in post. <laughs> yeah, but just put it in post. Boop. You gotta make this look better in post, right? <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah, you could you could impose one of you the can, uh, faces. You can get uh, George Lucas the CGI into the podcast later. <laughs> you can impose the villain's face over mine when I'm singing it. <laughs> Cartoon Royale, the special edition. <laughs> <laughs> Any so place everyone's head with uh, characters from the shows they were talking about. Can you put a CG pair on my shoulder, please? <laughs> and can you oh. put Jop the Hut behind me? And can you have a big walk creature walk in front of me while, while I'm talking? <laughs> Anything? Background? It's not really background, it's a green screen. It's not even real. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually I'm actually in the park right now, sipping a martini. <laughs> like... <laughs> I am currently upside down in space. What were we even talking about? I... <laughs> I uh, my little pony and how I was gonna offer so, to end the show, um, end the podcast with the song. You know, how much time do we oh. have left? Yeah. Uh, so, Twelve minutes. Well, okay. so do we have any like closing statements? Like, do we want to talk about like? What I wanted to ask you guys is what when I when I when I wanted to ask you guys because there's some shows out there that got canceled or they're ended, and you wanted like some closure to the show like what show would you want to see have a proper like ending with a movie hmm. like maybe the ending you thought wasn't that good you know maybe a movie would probably change that and you know rewrite the rules for the ending of the show you know what i would want to see that i i mean i kind of felt like the ending was fine but it kind of left an open answer is um legend of Korra. The finale. I know uh, people like the finale. It was really good, but they I don't just like want that me to show get at more. All. I never liked it. You didn't like it? I never liked Legend of Korra at all. But ever. I do see not, where you're going. Not from day one, not till the end. They could like do like some like movie finale with it. I, I don't know. I, I I felt that was just something that just came up my mind because I remember watching. I just there's going wanted to be more a because... third uh, series of a- of the Avatar franchise on coming to Netflix. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, I heard about that. But only only one of the creators is on it, though. They were because saying they... on making a movie at one point, but yeah. Mm-hmm. See, the problem with Cora oh, is <laughs> the problem with Cora is they lost the main writer for uh, Avatar, which he he, wow. he was the, the he, he was the one who like brought the whole series together. Without him, it just kind of fell apart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyways, back to the like which cartoon like which cartoon that ended. I would like to see continued to a movie. Hmm. Yeah, I remember. I can't remember the show, but it was there was a show that I liked and it got canceled really quickly. Uh, hmm. it's, it's a lot to think about, you know. It's just like it, it is. It's a big question that you know we're thinking about because I um, would like to see. You know what I would want to see? I mean, I know it's not going to get canceled yet or anytime soon, but um, I would like to see a, um, I know, 
Oh wait, I might have forgotten. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I, just, I already just... brought up Futurama, which you know, it, I heard it had a pro really good send off. You know, but you know, maybe they could get to Matt Green on that since everyone's like, "Hey, when will there be another Simpsons movie?" Maybe he'll be like, "There won't be another Simpsons movie, <laughs> but there'll be a Futurama one." Well, cool. you know, maybe the Simpsons will finally end with a movie. <laughs> I think huh. the only that would be a, that would be a good way to end the series if, that... if they ever decide to stop it. Well, that's the... go ahead. Go ahead. I think the only way the Simpsons is actually going to end is if Dan Castellaneta kicks the bucket. Oh, no! I was going to say that uh, what I've heard actually is that the Simpsons are, are going to try to end it off how the show started with um, Santa's Little Helper, that kind of episode with Christmas, the first one. So it's, so people can binge watch it in a loop without any stops. Um, but uh, otherwise, uh, any closing thoughts on movies that are based on cartoons and or anime that you'd well, like to say? I can say that is looking a whole lot brighter than it was during the 2010, 20-0, 50,000th decade. Um, it's going to be a long climb, but hopefully, eventually, we'll see some good ones out there and have those be the big attention grabbers. You know, it's it's really hard to make a cartoon, like a movie based off of cartoon. Like, it, it rarely ever works, and when it does, the movies are usually never great. So I think um, I think they should just stick with the. I think they should bring the creators on with them if they're ever going to make them. If they're going to keep making them, they should at least put have input from the creators. Yeah. Also, even if the creators do get involved, I like to bring this up. They should do what most of the fans want the ending, and not let the studio itself, you know, take control and like you know, play around with them. As long as it's, like, handled correctly and not screwed up, I think it'll turn out to be a solid, you know, finale or, like, standalone movie or however the fans wanted it if they wanted it to be a continuation or, like, a comeback to their series. You never know. Mm -hmm. there, is a, there is a danger, though, on giving fans exactly what they want. Oy. You'll yeah. end up like the second Ninja Turtles movie from last year. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> but, like, that's because that's what they want. But it was just but like still the studio kind of just as bad. Well, that's that, that's that's an interesting thing to bring up is because yeah, they did fix a lot of things from the first movie and they brought it to the table in the second one, and yeah, they... I... but still by the same people who made the first one, so it was no. kind of like well, and that's why no, another... that's why barely anyone saw it. It was a box office bomb. I saw it. What are you talking about? I well, saw it. I saw office. it. I enjoyed he it. Blew up. I enjoyed it for. I enjoyed the damn thing because I loved how Bebop and Rocksteady were in it. I mean, I'm. I mind you, yes, I know it was produced by Michael Bay and David Green was trying to do his best as director on the thing, and you know, and it is based on. It kind of did pay homage to the '87 cartoon, so much so. The style is not good enough for me. I, you know, it's, it's not like it's not all about that. Sometimes, sometimes they try to adapt it, you know, and try to give us characters they want, like Krang and you know, and Bebop and Rocksteady. And it's weird how they recasted Shredder because <laughs> that's not the same Shredder. That, that confused me. <laughs> I was like looking at it's like trying to recast four times in the in two movies. Oh, wow, bad. he's changed so fast. He's it, like yeah, days he or months after sure. the first movie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I know um, I know they brought this up in the Nostalgia Critics review, but uh, Shredder goes out like a bitch in almost every single thing he's in. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Point of having been. Oh yeah. That's gotta change. Make him a fun, make him a more intimidating villain. Because if you read the original comics, he's pretty intimidating. Or, or even see the two thousands cartoon, you know? Yeah, that's true. The two thousand two thousands cartoon made Shredder a badass, actually. Um. But yeah, I mean, the Turtles is a great example of stuff. Because it not only was the first movie was based on the comic, 
and the cartoon in a way because they tried to do the bandana thing like in the cartoon to distinguish them apart but the first movie was actually based upon the comics more than anything else which is great because if you got a comic attached to it you can actually adapt it pretty well compared to a cartoon I mean, that's what the second one did, like, Secret of the Ooze, because adult, uh, parents were like, oh my god, violence? We can't have violence in our movies! You know, yeah, they can't so... use their weapons, so let's use toys that it's a lot more let's easy to imitate. and bread! And All yeah. I can think about the yes. second one was just bizarreness. And... Bizarreness everywhere. Go Everything was bizarre go in the go. Ooze. Go. Vanilla <laughs> Ice. Vanilla Ice out of nowhere. I mean, that's... It's interesting because they just and they tried to bring in Beep of Rexy, but no, they couldn't do it at the time. So it was just two random mutated creatures. I think, I think Secret of the Ooze is uh, so bad it's good movie. It it is yeah, actually it, I, it I, is. Yeah, Ninja Turtles three is just bad. Oh fuck! I haven't seen that one, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Turtle Help! I'm a turtle. I, I can't, can't get, get up. <laughs> Show wing. Total Legorama, showing. <laughs> and we got off topic again. <laughs> no, no, I was trying to get the things to, 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 to off top. What? I was. <laughs> you can't even think about it either. <laughs> you can't even think of where I was going. I defend you. I really do. Where were we going with this? <laughs> I was just running away with it because Turtles is based on a fucking cartoon. I mean, come on. Fuck, I mean, the Turtles next mutation for crying out loud. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, is the one where they cross over with the Power Rangers? Yes, that one. That yeah. same thing with a freaking female turtle, Venus de Milo, for crying out loud. Turtle boobs. <laughs> Well, like about, no, no, what's I... funny about that show is they made them not siblings, so that way they can dang Venus. <laughs> I know, that's gonna be a whole nother level. I mean, this I wonder how they're gonna make her in the film. EMNT Triple X Edition. <laughs> uh, that already happened. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a... There is. Some, some... There is. There is. Ten inch Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Oh, I. I, 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 I've seen it. It is a, it is an awkward porn parody. Okay, two minutes. Fuck that. Thank you for listening. Childhood to, ruined. To, fuck. Yeah. Thank you for listening to this. Time for me to sing the music, but first to give our farewell. First off. To say thank you for listening to this episode of Cartoon Real. If you want us to do more, leave a comment below, give this video a like, and uh, comment below saying what uh, movies based on cartoons you like or dislike. And uh, yeah, I'm Mike Mixtape, and adios, amigos. See ya. I'm Cameron Martell, and I'm going full circle. <laughs> and I'm Keegan, and I'll catch you later. I'm disconnecting. Oh, what's so wrong with the little competition? Are you afraid of failing the audition? Battle! You wanna let win it? Let's have a battle. Battle of the bands. Excellent show. Even the Bat family's proud. <laughs> oh, I had to end it off on a, a weird note. Adios, Space Cowboy. <laughs>